very warm greetings everyone, my name is Nick from the Commodore 64 and if you can read her uh, typeface, this one is called Mr. Heli, published by Firebird in 1989, it's a shooter, um, it's known in North America as a battle chopper in the arcades, but the arcade game was by Irim in 1987, a multi-direction shooter, we've already reviewed it on the ZX Spectrum, you control a helicopter, shooting stuff to try and get upgrades and power-ups and defeat bosses at the end and go through several worlds, come out on the Amiga as well and show CPC and most recently the Wii. So here we go. It's not expert gameplay. Everyone knows this who watches the channel. That's in how you'd have got on your first second go. With them enough there to want to go and play it again. How easy it is, how difficult it is. So we've got a choice of three here. I think if we need to do it one of the other ones, we need to reload the game from scratch. So let's see how we go. If the load times are long, I will consider editing them. So basically, in a heli chopper, it's loaded eventually, hooray. Right, energy in the middle, uh, we're firing upwards and across. Scrolling is pretty good, more colour than in the ZX Spectrum one. There's an upgrade there, but we haven't got enough money to buy that yet, that's some kind of bomb. So, let's check on the shields. Money is in the bottom right, 180. There's probably a tactic here that uh, probably brings you more success than what I'm doing. I'm just playing like a stupid Wally. If you had this game back in the day, let me know, or if indeed you are a stupid Wally, let me know as well that's important too right sold down i've got something there don't know what it was but i bought it with the, all the money i gained oh it's double fire that looks important so already off to a pretty good start in my red chopper right uh right so the more power-ups you get in this the better it is for you but i presume if you start losing them it can get super difficult a bit like um i'd say oh that's good i've got uh, um homing missiles as well so it's going to be one of those games where I'm great on my first go by fluke and then I'm rubbish throughout the rest of it. Anyway, we'll soon find out. What's that thing? 200? That was a, some sort of smart bomb, I think. Right, okay. Don't shoot me. I've got no mood to, to get killed. There is a trainer on this game, so on my version, but I won't play that. I'll try and play it properly for a change. I think when I reviewed the ZX Spectrum one, I did have a poke, I think, for immunity. We'll check that out now. Uh, that wasn't a very generous checkpoint there. I've had to start all over again from the start. Hmm, I'm not a fan of that. I would like to start from uh, from where I left off. But anyway, uh, the, the scrolling on this game is pretty good. Um, if you'd been a fan of the arcade game by Irim, I think you would have liked this as well. It came out two years later after the arcade game. If you watched this far into the video, uh, please consider subscribing. We do review Commodore 64, not as much as uh, the Spectrum stuff, but we do review at least one a week. So if you want to um, um, subscribe, please do so. Click the bell notification if you haven't already to see when new videos are going up, although I do put them on Twitter eventually, uh, or X, or whatever it's called, and uh, Facebook. Uh, Twitter is Jenkins7Nick. Uh, right, boom, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Yeah, it's not a bad little one, this one. It's a bit, bit tricky for me, but I always find shooters a little bit um, uh, tricky. But if I can get to the first checkpoint, that'll be happy days. And this is pretty, um, oh man, this is pretty representative, I think, of what my first go would have been back in the day. I think I would have played it a little bit in the first few days, then not played it at all for ages, then played it again and maybe got a bit further, and it would have got me that way. So for me, it would have been a slow burn. But I think it would have scored good scores back in the day. I deliberately keep away from those. Um, newbie players might be a little bit frustrated on this. Expert shooter people that are good at weaving uh, would love the thing. If you're an expert shooter person that's good at weaving, both in gaming and the real life, then comment in the comment section below. Share your secrets with everyone. You can do it. Uh, yes, you can. Right, a red chopper. I wouldn't mind having a yellow chopper. People are going to start doing their own jokes now. Or a green chopper. What's going on there? But anyway, a cyan chopper. That's good. We all live in a cyan submarine, no chopper. Right, go. That's almost a cyan submarine song for those people that watch the channel for a while and hit a video with a cyan submarine song comes up. If you know the cyan submarine uh, song, then you're obviously you're a connoisseur of channel and Jenkin. Thank you very much. Yes, we've got over 5,000 subs now. That's not many by, by uh, superstar standards, but it's a lot for me in this slow burn tin pot machine that somehow keeps running. Thank you to the members for keeping it running. If you want to be a member, it's quite cheap, you know, and it helps me, helps me, uh, well, do less work, so I've got more work to put into this and don't get stressed all the time. But uh, yeah, start some small tip. Click on the members uh, button. Doesn't, you know, doesn't automatically enroll. You've got stuff to do, right? Let's have another go again. Let's take everything we learned and forget it all. Right, up here. Let's smash all through this stuff. Oh, I've got kabooned as well. That's no good. 
Some stuff just, like destroys you quicker than the other stuff. Might like real life, really. Like work will destroy you slower than the Ebola virus. Uh, I don't know which one's worse, but anyway, take your pick. Like missiles flying up in the sky, like a big meat pie, and a fungi, like a mushroom. Right, come on, let's just keep blasting. Blast it, big nose. I mean, uh, listen to that helicopter engine. I don't think I'd be very confident that that was the engine. And also as well, is this helicopter in space? Hmm, how good is a propeller in space? Not quite sure about that, I'm really nut. 400, almost unlocked, but not. So my battle in this review is to get to the first checkpoint. If I do that, it's a great success. There's a star backfield, backdrop, I should say, but it's not moving, is it? It's staying stagnant, and the scenery in front, the foreground is moving. That's giving it a little bit of depth. Depth? Depth? What's depth? A little bit of depth, so that's, uh, that's quite nice. I do like the extra colour that this version is providing. I don't think I reviewed it on the Commodore on Amiga uh, quite yet, but uh, that might be something to have a go at. I think it might be one of those games, I might be wrong, where it's better on the Commodore 64 than the Amiga, looking at this. It looks like it suits 8-bit uh, technology better than 16-bit. Right, OK, so we're going down now. Is this a checkpoint? We can, but hope. Right, just trying to get out of the way. Don't need to destroy everything, but it does help, because they'll come after you. Don't worry about all the power-ups, a bit like Batty. You keep going for the power-ups, it spells disaster. Oh god, they're homing in on me. Oh, I'd love a sh my kingdom for a shield. Energy is very low. Please, have I hit a checkpoint? Let me. Yes, right, I've hit a checkpoint. Good. So this is when uh, putting the trainer on in this game. If you want to see a bit more, would come in useful. Uh, there's different uh, wells which you saw at the beginning, uh, but as I say, you can only pick one as the game loads, and then you're stuck there till you complete it. So you need a complete reload. Uh, the other levels are uh, a different theme, but the graphics will be, I imagine, roughly the same. The experience will be roughly the same. And it's good you can start at different places, because if you're really struggling to get past one bit, you can just reload it again on another section. So, you know, that'd be quite nice as well. So, you know, uh, this game's pretty good. It's quite a light to like here. I mean, it's tricky for me, but I'm Nicky, I mean. And I make a meal out of most games. Um, it's pretty much newbie play. You'll never see any complete walkthroughs here. Although I did complete com uh, Acid Attack on the Commodore 64 during a live stream. I'm sure that was a fluke. That's the occasional one we seem to complete, but they seem to be quite short. And that's when you know that the game is uh, designed for newbie people. Uh, right. I mean, uh, yes, the helicopter's making a strange noise, saying buzzing around in space. But there's a lot moving on screen at the same time. There is no notable slowdown. Commodore 64 didn't have any colour class like the Spectrum I owned. What, what I'm aware of, anyway. Biff. All the systems seem to have their own colour set. I haven't reviewed any Amstrad CPC or played any before, so I expect that's got recognisable graphics as well. You see a screenshot that says, that's yes, that's Amstrad CPC. Now with Xbox and PlayStation, it's not very obvious to see which one's which unless you get a magnifying glass out. But they all have their own character, and that's why I like the 8-bit world the best. Com um, Commodore 64 and Spectrum were the first ones sort of like uh, that had popularity, wasn't they? And uh, the Spectrum was, was the one I had. Uh, slightly easier to program, so it had lots of keywords on the keypad, uh, the keyboard, but, um, you know, different programming languages, really. They both have their own like, capabilities. Commodore 64 had a far superior sound, but having said that, if you go through this meteor storm, I wouldn't change the spectrum's beeping and blitz for the world. It's nostalgia, isn't it, really, what you grew up with? Occasionally, you have, I have someone that uh, comments on a game saying the, the game's crap or something like that, even the good games, as people that haven't really grown up with, with the era. Uh, so, you know, they don't get a warm feeling. If you grow up with PlayStation, why would you be playing this? Because you, you've got no attachment to it, and that's what, it, that's what it is about. And that's where you defeat stress as well, having a good old shoot, uh, relive really some memories. It's taking you back, although you might not have had this game, it's taking you back to an era where you, you might be okay. Oh, it's an end level boss, I think. Or oh, it's a mad hairdryer that's gone out of control. Uh, well, at least I get my hair dry. Um, yes, we should have put a nuclear missile here. Right, one helicopter against everything. Luke Skywalker's, Skywalker's X-Wing might have been a little bit better, but well, I've still got plenty of energy. Come on, I can take this thing out. Not to dinner. Uh, there's going to be one person going to be victorious here. So I almost got to the end of this first level then. I might be this person, I made not. But this is when, um, really, you need your power-ups. And because I have no power-ups, I fail and I'm dead. Well, you know, I've got 
I got past the first checkpoint and got to the end of level boss, so there is there is hope there. I quite like this game. It's quite vibrant, quite colours, and I think it's a good conversion of the uh, the arcade game as well. So highly recommended there. So I hope to like having a look at that one. I enjoy playing it. It's a uh, Mr. Helly on the Commodore 64, published by Firebird in 1989, based on the arcade cabinet from Irem in 1987. A good multi-direction helicopter shooter for some reason in space, I think. If you've got any comments about this game, similar games, or anything retro, then put that in the comment section below. You're more more than welcome. Until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, oh, it's an end level boss, I think. Or oh, it's a mad hairdryer that's gone out of control. Well, at least I get my hairdryer. Um.